the first knot is going to be the figure eight follow through. Now, I have made another video about this, uh, how to tie this using the alien head. <laughs> and it's actually pretty fun. I'll leave a link in the description down below for that video if you want to see it. Now, that is actually not how I tie the figure eight when I'm down at the bluff. So I don't also do the twist method either. Uh, I'm a little bit more lazy than that. I don't want to bring it up and, and do that and think about that. So I just keep that bite of rope down here. You have your tail end or your working end. It's that long. It goes over your standing end, which is the part that goes to your, your belayer. So you go over that, then you go underneath that, and then you drop down through the hole that you created. Okay, there is your figure eight follow through. Now, to continue on with this, I first need to put on a harness. Here we go. All right, there we go. So I got this harness on. Now that it's on, uh, just talk a little bit about it. You have your leg loops down here, and this comes up. This is your belay loop, and then it goes to your waist belt. We have our figure eight follow through, and I'm going to take my tail and follow your belay loop. So you're going to go through the piece for your legs, and then up through your waist, and you're following this belay loop exactly. And then you're gonna take your tail, and you're just gonna trace back through exactly where this rope lays. So, okay, so it comes that way, pull that loop nice and small. Now it wraps around underneath, and drops down through here. Goes over the top, right there. Go ahead and pull that snug. Your loop needs to be no bigger than this is right here. So it needs to be fairly small. And then we're gonna take this tail that we have right here and we're gonna tie the next knot that every climber needs to know. Okay, and that knot is the backup knot or the stopper knot. You're going to wrap over your standing end, which goes to your belayer. Wrap over it once creating a loop, again back over itself, and then up through those two loops that you created. Okay, so it'll look like an X on one side and an equal sign on the other side. Now let's talk about the other places that you're going to use the stopper knot because that is the second most important knot for all climbers to understand according to Climber Dad. Okay, and you're belaying, and all of a sudden your climber takes a fall or bring your climber back down, and the rope slips through. What's going to happen? Just make sure that you have a good habit of tying in the stopper knot. That knot will not go through your belay device. It's going to stop right there doesn't matter if you have a 60 meter rope and you're doing a 15 meter climb. Just find the end of the rope, tie your stop or not, and get a good habit of it. That's all it is. Now the third knot that's most important for every climber to know is a not exactly a knot. Sort of is. It's how to take care of your rope and that's called a butterfly coil. I really do think that every climber needs to know this. You can get by without knowing the butterfly coil, but it's gonna benefit you greatly if you know that. So we're gonna talk about that. There's two ways to tie it. One way is just from the end of the rope, and you're gonna grab that end, go over your shoulders like this. Now you've got this bite down here, go over. And you continue until you've got everything done. Now, the other way that you can do that is you can find the middle of your rope, which is, mine is marked right here. So I'm gonna take my thumb to the middle and I'm gonna go over. It's gonna be the exact same thing. Now I'm gonna speed up the camera here because you don't wanna watch me do this 
Uh, one other thing that I like to mention is if you're going to carry this up to wherever you're going, try to make these loops kind of shorter than your arms themselves. If you make them as long as possible to your arms, it's going to be a little bit more hassle. Now what we're going to do that we've uh, coiled this up over our shoulders and I've got about 15 feet of tail. It's quite a bit of tail. It's better to have more tail than not enough. Just go ahead and get this off of your neck without dropping any of these coils. Hold it in one hand if you can and you're going to just do one wrap, two wraps, and just wrap this up. Oh, this brings back such good memories. I love climbing, and now that I've become more involved in the climbing industry, unfortunately I don't get to climb as much, and it's sad. But wrapping up my rope in the butterfly coil is really bringing back some good memories. So after you've got this wrapped up, and it's really important that you don't lose this eye. Okay. So once you have this wrapped up and it's nice and pretty, you're going to take a bite of rope and you're going to pass it right through that eye. And I always do this without even pulling my hand out. So when I pull my hand out, I've got this in my hand. Just take a bite of rope through and then pull it through here. And I do have way too much tail, but that's okay. So we have it, the butterfly coil at this point, at this stage. Now the reason why we went shorter than our arms is right here. So we're going to take those two strands and throw it over our shoulders, keeping the coil high. Now if we went as long as our arms were, these coils, the end of the coils would be hanging down a little bit past my butt cheek. And that can get caught on things as you're hiking. So keeping it a little shorter is going to keep that up higher. Go over your shoulders. You're going to cross behind your back, snug that down nice and tight. Now I've got a little bit too much tail, so I'm gonna wrap it around a couple of times here. And it's, it's done. So there is the butterfly coil. And the three knots that I think every climber needs to know. Now please do not stop there. There are some amazing knots out there that will help you in your climbing journey. If there's a knot that you would like to know how to tie, please tell me, comment down below, and I'll see if I can make a video of that. But I'll see you guys right here next time on Climber Dad. First, you need a beautiful rope, like this sexy rope. I have here. This has been with me for a lot of years, this rope. And if you are a rope connoisseur and know your, your colors and your ropes, you recognize this rope, you might be thinking, Climber Dad, that rope is way too old. You should retire it. Well, it's actually in really good shape. Now, you should uh, retire your ropes every uh, five years at minimum uh, or at the oldest. But there are ways that you can get a little bit more life out of your rope. And if you want to see a video about that, let me know in the comment section down below.